Hi, my name is Dag Mazunikin. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Public Policy at York University, and I wanted to tell you about one of the research projects that I'm currently working on. Um, my main interest has to do with the question as to why courts are influential in making public policy. And the particular area of interest is whether they've become powerful players in also influencing immigration and refugee policy. And I have been working on a comparative context and I'm interested also in how history has shaped this relationship over time. And the two um, case studies that I've been working on have to do with Germany and Canada. But I'm interested in the larger context of how courts in Europe versus courts in North America have influenced policy making. So let me tell you just a little bit briefly what asylum and refugee policy, how we define that, and then perhaps I can talk a little bit about why this is a really important question. Refugees come to countries because they have been persecuted and the assumption is that they come from a war zone or that they politically have to fear for their lives. So they're looking for a place to stay and states really have a difficult time sometimes assessing refugees and how credible they are. And that is really something where some states like Canada say we should be generous because these individuals will be joining our community and they will be participating as citizens at some point in the life of Canada. But in Europe, because of um, historical reasons, countries have been much more skeptical and there have been so many people coming and wanting to join European countries. So courts play a really critical role in this assessment of credibility. But not only that, courts also get to uphold governments to a certain standard of human rights norms and they get to check to make sure that governments don't get too concerned with security and their own national interests. So sometimes courts stop governments from enacting laws that are too restrictive and that do not meet fundamental principles of justice and the democratic way of governing. And that is really fascinating because there are some really important differences between the way that courts have done this historically in Germany and in Canada. You might know that Germany has had a commitment after World War II as part of its Nazi legacy to allow everyone the right to claim asylum in Germany and that was entrenched in the German constitution. So that has allowed for a very broad access to the courts by asylum seekers or refugee claimants and both words are often used interchangeably. But that then has caused a lot of domestic problems in Germany because the country has not been happy with its own national identity and it did not really know what to do with these migrants because Germany has always defined itself as a not a state that does not um, actively solicit migrants. So the courts have been said to have held the door open for migrants, especially the Federal Constitutional Court has passed some really important judgments that have said to the government, no, you need to give this person who was rejected as an asylum seeker the right to restate his or her claim in a courtroom where um, more evidence can be presented and where there is more fairness given to the process of how this person is um, being treated. Because sometimes it's really difficult for refugees to produce the right documents. Sometimes they come from cultures where it's hard for them to really say how old they are, what their national capital is. Some of the critical questions that we ask in a refugee process when we try to figure out whether they are credible. And this credibility business is really something where law and the courts also come in in the Canadian context in a different way because Canada historically has been very open to immigrants and refugees and has been more generous in assessing this credibility business. And uh, there is a quasi-judicial process that means there are court-like rules used at um, the Immigration and Refugee Board to assess the credibility of this applicant. But courts, getting to the courts in Canada is much harder because Historically, um, common law countries have been more restrictive in letting courts um, look at the actions of government in what's called the administrative law area. So if you're a refugee claimant in Canada and you are accepted at the very first level, that's good for you because it's so hard then to state your claim again if you are rejected because the courts need to accept 
your um, claim that's called a leave to appeal process. So there are some really interesting procedural differences, there are historical differences and cultural differences between Germany and Canada, but courts at a bigger level really hold government to account, so they oversee individual procedures, but there is a really interesting political dispute in which they get into. And of course, Germany is part of the EU, so there are two big other European courts, the European Court of Human Rights and the European Court of Justice that have also been getting into refugee determinations. And of course, the European Parliament and the European Commission now want to harmonize um, refugee and asylum procedures. And it seems that there's an interesting policy learning going on between the two countries. In Canada, unfortunately, recently it seems that Canada is adopting more of the restrictive European policies, but Europe is still looking to North America to learn about how to integrate migrants. The courts have played a role there as well, but to a different extent. So there is a bit of exchange, but it's a really important question because courts uphold values, but they also impose checks on government.